Guess what? Alex just proposed. I'm getting married. I know. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to start planning the wedding. No, don't worry about it. It's been really sore lately, but I'm okay. Okay, so the plan is, is that after I graduate, Alex and I are going to move in together. Mm-hmm, I know. No, it's okay. I went to the doctors. He said I'm too young for anything serious to happen. But there's just one thing. Two months after Alex and I moved in together, I was diagnosed with cancer by Dr. Hot Pants herself. Now I know what you're thinking. Dr. Hot Pants, is that her real name? No, that's not her real name. That's the name that I gave my breast surgeon after one of the initial visits. So I'm in the patient room, waiting to be examined. And I have on those half robes, you know, the ones you're supposed to cross over and tie, but there's like 10 strings and all you really need is two. So it's too confusing, so I just leave mine open. So I'm sitting there, cold, on their version of a lazy boy, when Alex leans in. Wilma. Wilma. Don't you think the doctor's a little too hot to be a doctor? <laughs> and I thought about it. Because, you know, that is a good question. <laughs> too hot to be a doctor. I don't know. I mean, am I too hot to be a patient? But I digress. <laughs> Monday, October 27th, 2003, Dr. Hot Pants walks in. <gasps> Wilma, hello. How was your weekend? OK, great. Yes, well, we got the results back from your biopsy. Mm-hmm. And it is. Cancer. I know. Okay, well, you, what you need to think about is, are you going to have a single mastectomy or a double? I personally would have a double because of your age. Now, this week is going to be a very busy week for you. I, you're going to have to see this oncologist and this plastic surgeon. That is if you want to have immediate reconstruction. And then I'll see you next Friday for the surgery. After the word cancer, all I heard was, Wilma, you're dying. I mean, I know she didn't say that, but that's all I heard. I mean, it was like that poem. Have you heard that poem? The poem was like, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves an immortality. Death. Death. I mean, that was the first thought that was going through my mind when I was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 24. The second thought was that I would have to deal with cancer for the rest of my life. I mean, the feelings that I felt that day, they were so overwhelming, I can't even explain it. I mean, this was something that was so much bigger than me. It was out of my control. I felt alone. You know, when I was going through treatment, I kept thinking, if I thought I had a low self-esteem before I had cancer, I must not have known how good I had it. <laughs> but you know what I think is funny? How when you're going through treatment, people go out of the way to tell you that you look great. I mean, for no reason. When I was going through treatment, I was a big, round, bald alien. And people would ask me, so Wilma, how are you feeling? And before I could answer, like, but you look great. You can't even tell you've had and I would think, really? <laughs> you can't tell at all? <sighs> I have no hair. My fingernails and my toenails, half of them are gone. And the ones I do have, they're black. And they're hanging on for dear life. But I look great. <laughs> After experiencing cancer, I really learned how to act like everything was OK. My first experience came pretty early in my diagnosis, because I only worked for my job for about a month and a half. And then when it came time for me to go on my disability, I found out that I only coughed two weeks and then sick leave. So Alex and my mom, they had to borrow from themselves as well as friends just to make ends meet. So I did my research. And I found the American Cancer Society. And on their web page, they had assistance. And there, I was connected with two organizations, the Breast Cancer Survivors and the Breast Cancer Angels. The Breast Cancer Survivors, they help pay for our rent. 
and the breast cancer angels, they paid for our groceries and they paid for our, my premiums when my medical insurance lapsed. I mean, these are organizations that are funded by people who practice random acts of kindness. Another example is when I told my friends and family that I was determined to keep their original wedding date. Yes, they thought I was crazy, but they still gave it their all. And now, for my favorite part of the story. When I was online, I also came across a store called Castle for Brides. Now, the reason why I wanted to go to that store is because they had a discount part in the back of the store. So I grabbed my mom and we went. And it was my first time inside of a bridal shop. So, Hello, thank you. No, I'm fine. And I came across some dresses that I liked. And then there was this one that stood out. And by this time, we were being assisted by a woman named Elizabeth George. And she started asking me questions about the wedding. And I felt comfortable in telling her my story. And then she asked me if I liked the dress that I had on. And I was thinking, what, this dress that I'm refusing to take off? Yes, I like the dress that I have on. <laughs> and then she wanted to know if I wanted to try it on with a petticoat. And then a tiara. And by this time, I'm nudging my mom, because I'm like, we cannot afford this. We need to ask her how much this is. Excuse me, how much is this? And Elizabeth just turned around and said, don't worry about it. Shut up! <laughs> Don't worry about it. <sighs> that day, I left with the dress, the matching shoes, the petticoat, and then a tiara. <sighs> I'm in a church now. Hi, Aunt Rita. Hi, Aunt Jackie. Yeah, I really miss you guys. I wish you guys were here today. Things have changed so much. I know, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm doing great. Oh, yeah, you would like them. I know, but I'm getting married. <laughs>